Seeing his dad playing the snare drum in a marching band made a huge impact on Jonathan Lundberg. He fell in love with the drums, and from that point on, there was no turning back. With guidance from several inspiring teachers, Jonathan began his musical path. After studying music at various schools in Sweden, and after his military service as a drummer with the Swedish Royal Army Band, Jonathan headed to Los Angeles to study at the Musicians Institute in Hollywood. Besides getting the chance to study with the best teachers, he also witnessed all of his musical heroes performing at various clubs in LA. During this time, he also participated in the Carlos Vega Memorial Scholarship Contest and won first prize. Inside Music Cast welcomes Jonathan Lundberg. So we're sitting here in Stockholm with the Swedish drummer Jonathan Lundberg and we are about to discuss a couple of things with him, have a little chat here today. And uh, the reason why is that uh, Jonathan has released a, a new album, his first solo album entitled Nebula. And um, hi Jonathan, thanks for taking the time. Thank it's you Michael. So, so good of you. Uh, I was thinking, you know, as an introduction for our viewers and our listeners, uh, perhaps to get to know the man behind the drum kit a little bit more, tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Jonathan Lundberg? Well, I'm a 31-year-old uh, drummer, of course, and uh, lived here in Stockholm for like seven years now. Okay. Um, I come from a small town south of Sweden, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I love music, drums, uh, and I pretty much live for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as we speak now, are you a, a full-time musician? Is, is that your, your, your kind of your work, your occupation, so to speak? Most of it. And I'm a part-time teacher okay. as well Okay. at the music school. Okay. Uh, but apart from that, I'm just actually playing. Playing. Mm. Oh, that's great. But you know, going back to where it all started, can you recall your first musical memory and uh, did it include uh, hitting things, so to speak, you know, pots and cans for instance? Uh, how did your drumming or, you know, in your first musical me memory, can, can you tell us a bit about yeah. that? Yeah, uh, my father is a drummer, Okay. so I remember seeing him in this local uh, marching band, oh, right. walking down the street, and me and my mom, we used to go out. Actually, it's the first of May we had this yeah. demonstration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't remember how old I was, but uh, it was a huge impact on me seeing uh. this marching band, and it's got this feeling I had to, you know, start playing the drums. So okay. That was my first memory that I can okay. recall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So See. no, no really pots and cans. Stuff. No, no. No, no. Really. No. We had a drum set at home. Um, my father had one. Yeah. So I used to, you know, go downstairs uh, in the basement and just, you know, goof around, but yeah, nothing serious really. Playing around. No. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess perhaps at uh, what age did you start, you know, taking formal lessons? How how old were you when you started doing that? Yeah, I was in the seventh uh, grade, so I guess I was like thirteen. Okay. I guess twelve, thirteen. Okay. Uh, had a great teacher yeah. named Thomas. Was right. done, really okay. great teacher. He learned me to, you know, sight read yeah. and play orchestral yeah. uh, percussion, and uh, yeah, it was it was great. Uh, three years actually. Okay. First years. Great. So um, to play the drums, um, did you play any other instrument as well? I don't want to uh, say that I can play it, but I goof around on the piano. Okay. Uh, which might be suitable for, for, you know, when you write composing music? Yeah. Okay. So piano is the instrument I compose on, but uh, as I mentioned, I can't play it. Okay. I would never do a gig with it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, musical influences, uh, who would you consider to be, be, be the musician or, or the drummer that uh, perhaps have, you know, influenced you the most that you see as a, see as a uh, integral part of your, your your musical growth well there's of course uh, a lot of them but mm -hmm. one very important drummer yeah is uh, a guy called uh, named uh, Virgil Donati yeah 
It's an Australian drummer. Yeah. In LA right now. Yeah. It's great. So it's great yeah, drummer. I think I was uh, around 16 or 17 when I heard him mm -hmm. with the band uh, mm -hmm. Planet X, mm -hmm. and yeah. I was just, just floored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that track, kind of mm -hmm. drumming, never heard it before. Okay. So yeah, I guess he and he, I guess it's very apparent in my drumming as well. It's very influenced by him. Yeah. But other than him, it's a lot of De Wecko, yeah. Vina Kaliuta, mm -hmm. and too many to mention really, but I think those three are the main drummers. Now, you mentioned this, that you were influenced by, by your father and he was playing a marching band, mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, you know, they're using this traditional grip. Yeah. And you, you do that as well. Has yeah. it always been like that, that you, you, you always stick to, to, yeah, to that? Yeah, actually it has. And when I saw, uh, I mean, when I saw Dave Wetko for the first yeah. time, and yeah. I bought this video, actually this video about Rich Memorial yeah. this concert yeah. from like 89 or something. Yeah, with, with Kalu and Bissonette. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So everyone basically played the traditional grips. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's the way to play. Okay. So my father also played that way. So, okay. Yeah. So it just came felt, in. Felt like, natural. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you 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 play the piano a bit, goofing around. But I was a bit uh, curious about your approach on on, on songwriting. Um, how's that process working for you? For you? Yeah, it's um, very different from uh, time to time, really. Yeah. Sometimes I just have a like a rhythm idea yeah. that I might think I want to do something with. Musically wise, yeah. not just like groove wise. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes, you know, a melody comes along, yeah. okay, and you try to find ways to get it to print yeah. and you know make an idea of it. Yeah. And sometimes I just sit down at the piano uh, and just try and find some voicings that I like and mm -hmm. work from that. Okay. So uh, it's it's very different from especially on this record. Every song is different, really from the one to another. Yeah. the songs to 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 your band I, I was thinking about you know when it comes to arranging is it a group effort or, or um, can you describe the process is it is it a yeah uh, it's a group process mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, I'm amazed that they still want to be in a band <laughs> because being a drummer and write music you know it's not very popular uh, to others <laughs> so I'm very happy that it, that it still want to be in my band. They still want to be in your band. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, often it's been like I bring an idea, mm -hmm. I try to make a, you know some sheets for it, yeah. and and uh, I mean of course it's going to be always problems with it because I'm not so used with it. I'm trying to learn. Yeah, uh, but they're very creative and they they bring their own mm -hmm. uh, ideas to it, mm -hmm. and uh, actually some songs. Uh, we wrote together, okay. especially me and Erik, Erik, yeah. yeah. guitar player. So mm -hmm. we had some really nice things going on, composition-wise. Um, and um, have, have you stick to the same core of your musicians all the time since you started Jonathan Dunberg band, or, or do you yeah. have different guys come in from time to time, or do you have your band, so to speak? Yeah, I had. Um, the, the, the concept of Jonathan Lombard Band now, it, it's been uh, active like 
four years now, I think. Okay. Something like that. These four guys now, yeah, that's pretty much. Okay. Your brand new album, Nebula, and I, I have to say it's an amazing collection of songs that you have come Thank up you. with. Very, very well done work. And um, how long was the process in, in making the album? I mean, I mean, did you start thinking a couple of years ago, I have to do this, or has it been an ongoing process, or that you finally decided now is time, or, or, or? Yeah, actually, it started already in 2005. Okay. Um, that was the time I, I started to really compose music or try to compose. And uh, I remember I recorded, actually, the first song was Quick Trip, which is on this record. Yeah. And um, that song went, you know, through a lot of change. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's been uh, like eight years now yeah. since then. So, yeah. Um, so I started then, 2000, 2005, and uh, I started to write more and more songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the, the idea was not really to make a full record, okay. mm -hmm. but just to make like an EP, like four songs. Yeah. So and it was actually like two years ago when. Uh, my friend Erik Metall, who mm. mixed the record, yeah. he actually brought out the idea to make a full-length album. Yeah. So then I decided to write a couple more songs. Mm. To it. Mm. But the process has been very, very, uh, you know, long, and it's taken a lot of energy. And I sometimes didn't think I was able to, you know. Make it happen. Really. I'm very happy that it's done that. I was thinking about you know musicians, and and there seems to be a tremendously skillful community of musicians at this point, you know, and you have gathered some of these guys on, on the album. And tell us a little about the guys in your band. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, when I moved here to Stockholm, yeah. the first uh, uh, bass player I can I can mention that, that I met was actually Henrik. Uh, and also through my good friend and uh, mentor mm. Robert Sundin, who is a teacher, yeah. a bass teacher. Mm. So we had a, like a jam session, just yeah. three of us, mm. two bass players and one drummer. It's, it's a very <laughs> dangerous combination, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. A lot so, of fun. Yeah, I guess, we just I guess. connected. Yeah. And it was, we like to play fast and we like to play hard things. Yeah. Push, so. Um, and maybe we should mention that that Henrik is uh, Henrik Linder from 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 a band called the Dirty Loops that you might have. Heard of. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Uh, also, so we started to, you know, jam duo. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this this was like back in 2007, I think. And um, when he decided to to make something more of my band, mm -hmm. he recommended his brother mm -hmm. Eric Linde. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we used to, you know, jam mm -hmm. together, and then. I met Christian Kraftling, mm. who's a keyboard player, mm. when I studied, uh, actually study right now in the uh, Royal Acad Academy of Music. Yeah. 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 And I really like this concept of uh, you know, making sounds and uh, you know, uh, really good keyboard player yeah. and uh, mm. make the group sound good together. We actually had some gigs without a keyboard player, Okay. but it, it was very hard to make it sound uh, the way I wanted it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So in order to, to, to you know recapture the feeling that you you want to have, you, it's essential to have that keyboard player. I guess. Yeah, I guess I because I am so influenced by the music of like, Planet X, yeah. which is very keyboard influenced, mm -hmm. very Schrinian yeah. and all that. So I guess I just wanted to go more to that kind of mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I see. And now it's have been released already, actually, and. Um, what are your plans for the future with this album? Will you try and will you go on some tour or do some gigs or, or yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, my dream will be to, I mean, of course, make a full time out yeah. of playing fusion, but mm. it's, it's hard, <laughs> yeah. especially in these kind of, uh, you know, times. In, yeah. in these times. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but uh, I hope to make some gigs with it and. Mm. Uh, yeah. I understand it's a very small community who listen to listen to music, yeah. but it's. Uh, I feel like a very good uh, report from everyone who yeah. listen to it and yeah. they, mm -hmm. they enjoy listening to it, and that's mm -hmm. kind of, I mean, uh, a dream come true mm -hmm. as well, you know, to actually maybe touch some people with the music yeah. I wrote, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So 
I'm very happy with it, but I hope to, you know, be able to to do some concerts and, and yeah. spread spread the word even more about your music. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. yeah, you know, and for all the the, the guys and that's out there that's want to buy the album, where can they find it? Where can they, they buy can it? They can find it uh, on iTunes yeah. for digital mm -hmm. download, and mm -hmm. it's on Spotify. Yeah. Everyone uses Spotify mm -hmm. right now, so um, if you want to have a physical album, I can uh, do it myself as in the moment. Okay. I'm looking for other distribution okay. mm -hmm. uh, solutions, but if you go to my website, yeah. which is jonathanlamberg.se, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you can find some links if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's PayPal. Okay. You can use oh, it. Okay. That's and I'll great. send it to myself. That's great. Well, you know, Jonathan, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for And um, it's a great album, and um, you guys out there, you go and buy it because, you know, it's worth every, every penny. It's a, it's a great one. So, this is it for now from Stockholm and from this beautiful little coffee shop. And uh, you can also check us out on uh, InsideMusicCast.com and follow us on Facebook. Facebook and uh, you know Jonathan thank you once again and I hope to catch up with you soon again in the near future thank thanks you. so much thanks